Hey guys, it's Tamian here doing love and welcome to another episode of the Man to Man Coach Podcast with my good friend and co-host Ben. Hey guys, how's it going? And today we're back with another face cam episode. Hope y'all liked the last one. Been pretty good feedback. So today we're going to be doing some Pro Bowl voting. But before we get into that, can we just talk about that DeAndre Hopkins play for just like a solid moment? Yeah, that was – oh, man, that was nuts. I I didn't think they were going to – I didn't think the Cardinals were going to win that game, but that was – took me back to uh, Stephon Diggs, Hail Mary again oh. a few years ago. It was beautiful. It was. I, I, I've seen that play like 30 times. It is. Never gets old. Never does. We, we try to go to that game, but due to COVID, it just didn't work out. But, oh, well. So talking today about the Pro Bowl, so when we're doing our voting, I will say I don't get why it's not in person. I get the whole COVID risk. But if you have games, you could have the Pro Bowl and just, you know, have everyone tested before they get there. I don't get why they're doing it just in Madden. That's kind of like, I don't know. I think they could have maybe done it some other way besides doing Madden, you know. Um, yeah, I'm not too against it. The Pro Bowl game is kind of a joke anyways. Like, the guys are just out there, and they don't really – they don't really try. I don't think anybody actually watches the Pro Bowl game. It's just uh, – and sometimes people get, like, unnecessary injuries. Like, Tyler Eifert a few years ago when he was in the Pro Bowl, had that back injury that carried over into the – uh the next season, yeah. So I'm not that upset. Gotcha. I can see that. Um. Anyway, so going into voting, so there's an even number of votes, and it should be equal per conference. So starting off with the NFC, the first man I'm going to have on this list is the man who threw that Hail Mary to DeAndre Hopkins, Mr. Kyler Murray. The dude is fantastic. He's up there. For MVP voting, the way he can run is so crisp and clean. Everything he does, his release is really nice. I like it. His rookie season, just the way he just gets it out there, um, and he's even you know improved on it year two with his deep ball accuracy. So he's my first vote. The second vote is the other person people have up there for MVP. And that is Russell Wilson, another NFC West quarterback. Um, I think some people are taking him out of the conversation unfairly due to two okay-ish games, but he has done a lot of incredible things. Russell Wilson is carrying that Seahawks team. That's why he's my MVP at the moment. If he was not on that team, the Seahawks are probably like a three-win team, if that. The third quarterback I have is Aaron Rodgers. This is the first time since about 2016 that I feel like I've really seen Aaron Rodgers be himself because 17 he was injured. 18, he was off, and then 19 last year, he was good, but still getting used to the system. Here with Matt LaFleur, he's flourishing with Devontae Adams and everyone. So Aaron Rodgers gets my other vote for NFC quarterback. In terms of AFC, you want to go with Ben's MVP, Patrick Mahomes. Dude's been unreal. There's not too much to add. We're then going to go with Josh Allen, who has had some down games, but he has been incredible. I thought he was great with this Cardinals game, and his good moments are definitely really good. Number three is between Big Ben or Deshaun Watson. I'm going with Deshaun Watson. I think he's had less to work with, and kind of like Russell Wilson. I think the reasons the Texans have won games is because of Deshaun Watson. So overall, Watson is my sixth quarterback, and those are my votes. Um, ben, who are your votes for quarterback? Um, so I'll start with the easy ones here. Obviously, he's an MVP candidate, and uh, for good reason. He's playing very good football this year. So I'm throwing him as my first NFC quarterback. And then uh, second NFC quarterback is going to be Aaron Rodgers. He has played pretty well most of the year. I think he's only had like one bad game. But um, uh, he's been fantastic this year. He only has three interceptions. Um, he has one of the highest quarterback ratings in the league, which 
I mean, you don't even have to look at the stats to know that he's just been an absolute animal out there with only really one person to throw to. And uh, Aaron Jones has missed some time. Uh, Rodgers hasn't really affected him much. He's done well with what he's had. He's had to be out there with Tyler Irvin and uh, some other no-name running back at some point. Um, and he has been very efficient, done well. Uh, and as a Vikings fan, you know, I have a lot of respect for this guy because of how much he's trashed us over the years. Um, but, yeah, that's my second NFC quarterback. My third NFC quarterback is not Kyler Murray. It's Tom Brady. Uh, and I know Tom Brady has a lot of weapons around him, but Tom has played very, very well this year. And if you take away his one game with, like, three interceptions, he has four on the year. And uh, he has been – he doesn't look a day over, like, 32. And the dude's playing excellent. He's making all his throws. Um, outside of that Saints game, that was kind of weird. But – um, he's just absolutely dominated every, like every single win that the Buccaneers have had. It's just felt just like they've just slandered their opponents. Um, so those are my NFC quarterbacks. Uh, now my AFC quarterbacks, um, I'll start off here with Patrick Mahomes. This guy has the, he's tied with Aaron Rodgers for the highest quarterback uh, rating in the league. And he has the best touchdown to interception ratio at 25 to one. Enough said. I don't really need to give this guy an introduction. Uh, Josh Allen is a huge threat on the ground and a big threat in the air. He leads the league in passing yards. Um, and uh, he doesn't even really – well, his receivers aren't bad, but he doesn't have, like, the most physical – like, he doesn't have a bunch of Julio Joneses on his team, right? He's got John Brown, Cole Beasley, Stephon Diggs, who's really, really good. But uh, uh, and despite the fact that they haven't really done that much running the ball this year, it's a lot of it has been on him to make the offense move, and he's done a very good job of that this year. And that's why the Bills are Super Bowl contenders this year. Um, and then my last AFC quarterback is going to go to Big Ben, uh, or I said AFC, right? Yeah, okay. Um, Big Ben coming off a ridiculous elbow injury that I thought was going to kind of be the end of his career has played excellent this year um he's been and yeah he's made some really good throws out there to his receivers in pittsburgh and he hasn't made very many mistakes four interceptions um he the steelers are the best team in the league right now they're undefeated so and he's one of the reasons why um the steelers team is very efficient they're very good at what they do and uh having that really savvy veteran back there definitely helps them. So these are my, uh, all of my AFC quarterbacks. Well, so much for a short episode. Okay. So first of all, I agree um, with, I, I don't agree, but I see we're coming with big Ben and Deshaun Watson. They're very close. I think Watson's a bit better on the ground. I disagree with Tom Brady over Cal Murray. Um, you'll get the two Saints games plus the games with the Bears, and plus Tom Brady's had some other misses in some other games as well. Um, I, I think that for me, Cal Murray is about equal to Tom Brady in the air, and I think that Murray's better on the ground. I think he's had more Pro Bowl moments like that Hail Mary to Hopkins, and you just look at these other moments. I think if you're a defense, you have to play more for Murray than you do Brady. I mean, you know, you, you can look at the stats and say they're better. I just think that Murray's better, more of a dual threat, and I think he's efficient in both. And that, you know, that's it. you know, Brady's been great, but I think some of his games with the wins, he's not dominated every single one of them. He's had some really not-so-great plays. Uh. Yeah, I mean, I guess I just for me, it's Kyler Murray's decision making still isn't quite there, and Tom is about eight hundred passing yards in front of him. Um, so, I uh, you know, I I can't really overlook that. Um, I thought as much as I do like Murray as a uh, uh, somebody who lives in Arizona, um, he would definitely be my first alternate for this um, this Pro Bowl. Uh, he has played very, very well. I just think 
I, I don't know. I just think Thomas played a little bit better. He's had his he's had his bad games, but his good games have been better than Murray's good games, in my opinion. Um, sure, Tom can't run, but he never has been able to, and he's still the greatest quarterback of all time. Um, and you know, because of how close these two are, I think my bias is going to play in a little bit. I do really like Tom Brady, so. I think that definitely plays a small role. Um, but, yeah, that's just kind of why I picked Tom. All right, fair enough. If you were to replace someone, I would actually go with Rodgers because Rodgers had that Tampa Bay and that Vikings game he should have won. But, anyways, moving on to running backs, which I'm going to go through this quickly. So, NFC, we have Dalvin Cook, the leader in yards. He's been an absolute beast. Um, there's not that much to say. I am then going to go with Ronald Jones. So funny thing about Ronald Jones. So back in Jacksonville, Leonard Fournette were number 27. So I thought Fournette was 27 on Buccaneers, and 27 was getting a lot of good runs early in the year. Like, oh, the Fournette signing is paying off. That was actually Ronald Jones. So Ronald Jones has been really good. Someone I was a bit lower on, he's been really nice. And the third running back I'm going with from the NFC is going to be Alvin Kamara. I've not been the biggest Alvin Kamara fan, but I can't deny what he's done this season is fantastic in the air and on the ground. For AFC, we got Derrick Henry. He has slowed down a bit this season, but still pretty good. Josh Jacobs has been really nice with the Raiders offense. And I'm going to go James Robinson. He's been really impressive for a rookie. So that's what I have for my running backs. Pretty uh, quick and simple. Um, yeah, as a Vikings fan, I'll definitely pick Dalvin Cook. I've made the case that I think he's the best running back in the league right now. Um, uh, as my other NFC running back is is going to be Ronald Jones. I didn't think he was really going to get a lot of uh, a lot of carries this year with Leonard Fournette and Lashawn McCoy coming over, and just how many weapons they have through the air, anyways. Um, but he is actually really opened things up for this Buccaneers offense. I mean. Shoot, he's playing really, really good. His uh, his vision's great. Uh, he's not the he's not the shiftiest dude in the world, but um, he still can can make guys miss. And he's been excellent this year. So I'm gonna put him up there. Um, and then my other, uh, yeah, my other uh, NFC running back here. Mm-hmm. This one's gonna be tough. Well, no, it's not. Uh, yeah, I'm going to give it to Alvin Kamara. And even though his rushing yards are not all that high, he actually leads the Saints in receiving yards and has more receiving yards than rushing yards, which is pretty darn impressive. Um, he's probably the best dual threat that's healthy right now, Christian McCaffrey's hurt. But, uh, I mean, Alvin Kamara is literally a wide receiver that's shifty. And this dude's all over the place the entire game. And, he really carries that Saints offense. He is literally the entire offense right now. Um, so, yeah, those are my NFC running backs. AFC, it's going to be pretty quick and simple. Derrick Henry needs no introduction. He's almost at 1,000 rushing yards, and we're going into week 11. Um, Josh Jacobs is the focal point of that Raiders offense. Uh, however he plays usually determines on how well the offense does the rest of the game because he opens up so much for the rest of that team. And then um, I'm going to go with, man, this is tough. Uh, I'm going to pick James Robinson over Kareem Hunt, and here's why. So Robinson, I think, has had a lot less um, talent around him. Hunt has had another good running back with him in Nick Chubb, and he's had Odo Beckham, Jarvis Landry, David Njoku, Austin Hooper, uh, the Browns just have a really, really good offense. The Jags, on the other hand, have a few nice pieces, but their line is probably worse than the Browns. Um, and he, he's been very good behind that line. He's got five touchdowns, he's averaging five yards per carry. And uh, as an undrafted rookie, he's really blown past everybody's expectations, I think. And he's been a nice addition out of the, uh, out of the backfield. Yeah, as well said, Ben. Um, for these next couple offense, I do want to go a bit quicker because we still have the defense. So I'm going to go with a quicker pace. I like what you said about 
depending how John Jacobs does, how Las Vegas does. Wide receiver, AFC, I'm going to go with Stefan Diggs. He, I believe, leads the NFL in reception yards. I'm seeing here on the app. Um, he's been really good with Josh Allen. Glad that is working out. Um, I'm then going to go with Keenan Allen. He's been very nice with route running. I think you could argue he's – I think we talked about this. You have him as your best wide receiver, so I'm going with Allen. And for my third AFC wide receiver, this was really tough. I'm going to go with Tyree Kill. The man has nine touchdowns. He's just unstoppable. Um, so I'm going with Kansas City. He's Chiefs Tyree Kill. The NFC, I'm going DeAndre Hopkins, the Hail Mary catcher. Fantastic. I think he's the best wide receiver in the game because of that play. Robbie Anderson is up there for yards. However, I think Robbie Anderson is just more speed. It's really hard for these NFC wide receivers. I'm going to go with Terry McLaurin for Washington. I think the only reason that Washington has been able to stay in these football games or is because of Terry McLaurin playing really good. He can do it all. And then I'm going with DK Metcalf as my other one. My other alternates were, um, I was considering Devonta Adams, Allen Robinson, and then for the AFC, I'll go AJ Brown and um, T Higgins. But wide receiver was definitely tough, but those are my guys. So, yeah. All right. Um, so I'll start with the, the NFC here. Um, obviously, I'm going to pick DeAndre Hopkins. Just got that ridiculous Hail Mary. Uh, he also has the best hands in the league. This dude can catch anything anywhere. He's been fantastic. Uh, my next NFC pick is Robbie Anderson with the Panthers. Um, I already thought he was a really, really good receiver when he was with the Jets. And now that he's away from Adam Gaze, he's really uh, bloomed into this really excellent speedster. Uh, very reminiscent of T.Y. Hilton in his prime and uh, Tyreek Hill right now. Um, and then my third NFC wide receiver is going to be Devontae Adams. This guy, as much as I, as much as I love Keenan Allen, I think it's, it's like Devontae Adams is seriously the best receiver in the NFL. This dude has like two plus touchdowns every week. He's almost unguardable. He's only played in seven games and he's sixth in receptions. And I think he's close in receiving yards. And I think he he does lead the league in receiving touchdowns with nine in seven games, which is oh, that's ridiculous. Um, I really wish he could play a full season. I want to see how he does. Um, AFC, going to be pretty brief here. Stephon Diggs leads the league in catches and I think yards. He's been really, really good for the Bills, really opened things up for them. Keenan Allen needs an introduction. He's really helped Justin Herbert come along. I'm sure he's glad to have him there. One of the best route runners in the game. Um, and then my third, let's see here, my third um, receiver for the AFC is also probably going to be Tyree Kill. Uh, he's just such an explosive playmaker. He has nine touchdowns as well. Um, he's just an absolute beast out there. He's not, he doesn't really need much of an introduction. Yeah, um, I agree with that, Ben. Next up for fallback, I just honestly picked random people. <laughs> I feel bad for fallbacks, but I don't really watch the games and death. I went Kyle Yushek, the Panthers guy, Amara, and the Giants guy, Penny, and then I went Andy Janovich with the Browns, uh, the Chargers guy, Neighbors, and Anthony Sherman for the Chiefs. So um, I, I, don't, I don't really know. Um, <laughs> yeah, me. I mean, unfortunately, they don't really give you any receiving stats because that's where these guys do most of their yeah, they work. They all have like one yard for one. one yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's it's pretty ridiculous. I mean, yeah, I, I, typically in the past they've only let you vote from fullback from each division. So that's what I'm going to do here. I'm not going to use all my votes. Use check, obviously, best fullback in the league, this dude. A lot of everything. AFC is going to be Alec Ingold from the Raiders. Uh, I do remember, I think he leads fullbacks in, re in receiving yards. He's had some uh, some really big plays this year for the Raiders. So, yeah, those are my two fullbacks. Okay, timing was tough for me because the AFC does a lot of good ones. Hunter Henry, yeah. Mike Kosicki, Noah Fant, Mark Andrews. I went with Travis Kelsey, one of the best players, and Darren Waller. Ben's talked about Darren Waller enough. Um, 
And then the other tight end I went with is going to be Mo Ali Cox, the real MVP of the league. Um, the, well, okay, who would you put him over? I mean, maybe. Still in the AFC. Yeah, the, those three Kelsey, um, Waller, and then Mo Ali Cox. But I need to put some respect on his name. Bro, I mean, where did this meme good. come from? Like, I don't understand it's, this joke. It's not a meme. It's not a joke. I'm voting. What do you for mean? Him. You can't even vote for him. He's not on this list. Yeah, he is. No, he's not. Yeah, he is. Oh, what? He's... What happened to Jack Doyle? I don't know. I think he got injured. Hope he's better. Okay. NFC, I went with um, Hayden Hurst. He's been nice for Matt Ryan. TJ Hawkinson has been good for Matthew Stafford. And then I went with Tyler Higby, who's been a good red zone threat for the Rams. Um, Jared Cook was also another. Actually, no, I think I'm going to keep my tight ends who they are. This could change. This was really close for me. A lot of guys have been great. There's been a lot of good tight ends this year, so that's good. Usually it's like kind of five guys who are elite, but I think you can make an argument there's about like seven. So, Ben, if you want to go through um, this yeah. um, pretty quickly. Yeah. Uh, so, Kelsey and Waller need no introduction. These guys are the top two tight ends playing right now, and they definitely deserve to be up here. Uh, for my third AFC guy, I was thinking Hunter Henry, but then I remember that Johnny Smith of the Titans exists. Um, he, I think, has the most receiving touchdowns. He's up there with Kelsey with six. Uh, he also has a rushing touchdown to add to his name, uh, and he's missed time, so that's why his uh, stats aren't as good. But he is like, yeah, let's see. He's he's still playing pretty well despite having missed some time, and I think I'm going to put him over Hunter Henry just because of how dominant he's been when he's been out there. Um. NFC, I'm going to go with uh, – sorry. I'm gonna go ahead. Um, NFC, I'm going to go with uh, Hayden Hurst from the Falcons. He's been really good this year. He um, has been. He's been underrated. He's been dude, I'm really glad he got a starting job. Um, TJ Hawkinson is my other tight end uh, from the NFC – or one of my other tight ends. Um, he's been really good this year. He's done a lot for the Lions, really helped him out. And Jimmy Graham has actually kind of had a nice year in uh, Chicago. He's going to be my, my third NFC tight end. He's had some really important plays for them. He hasn't had a lot of plays, but important ones. And I think that's what matters when it comes down to it. I'm going to skip offensive line because I, I don't know enough to vote for them. I just don't want to go off of name recognition. Um, yeah. So moving on to the defensive side of the ball, sorry, but I want to do my research with O linemen. You know, I just don't have the time to watch O, o linemen tape. Going on to the defense, so we have defensive ends six from each. So starting with my NFC defensive ends, um, because that's um, this side we're gonna start. Actually, I'm gonna start with the AFC. So for the AFC defensive ends. We have none other than Miles Garrett up there for defensive player of the year. I don't think he should win it, but he's been dominant. Um, what are your thoughts on or with Garrett? He's been great. I'm going to go Stefan too with six st- sacks for the Steelers. I think he's an underrated player in his career. You could put him up there with the Matt Staffords, Matt Ryans, Larry Fitzgeralds of the NFL, some of the more underrated players. He's really good. And I know T.J. Watt's forcing pressure, but the fact that Tewitt still gets six sacks with those other players, I think adds to his credibility rather than diminishing it. Um, and in my third AFC defensive end is actually going to be Emmanuel Ogba for the Dolphins. He currently has eight sacks, 16 solo tackles, three forced fumbles. I'm not just doing it because of the numbers. Well, I'm doing it with the numbers. Plus, the Dolphins' defense has been really good recently, and I think he's a big reason why. Um, that's the same reason why I'm going to vote Brandon Graham. Um, the Eagles have not been good this year, but Brandon Graham has six sacks. He's had two forced fumbles. He's been a game changer, and I think he's honestly the reason why the Eagles have had two of their wins. Not the main reason, but a big one. So that's going to be Brandon Graham for me. Um, I'm going to put Alden Smith, um, you know, regardless of kind of how things are going with him. Um, for Dallas, 
you know, he's been pretty nice. He's had four sacks, 21 solo tackles. That is tied for second. And he's been really good this season. He's um, had a really nice comeback. And then the third player I'll go with is I'm trying to see here who I want to give my vote to. Um, I'm you just give Alden Smith and a Pro Bowl vote. Yeah, he's been nice this year. Okay, he's been like all right. Well, you start off the season hot. I don't know. Um, I, I don't think tackles really matter that much. No, this is defensive ends. It, no, I know. I think but, there's a lot of better guys that you're not putting on this list in front of him, though. Such as who, Ben? Okay, I'll go with Nam and Sue. Yeah, finish, and I'll talk about it. Wait, it's Sue? He's a defensive end? What? That's what he's listed as. Oh, I thought he played DT. Uh, he definitely does. Uh, that's so weird. Um, you know what? I want to give Brian Burns one. I want to go Brian Burns for the Panthers. He's been nice, and then we'll Bias. go. Hey, he's been some nice <laughs> plays, Ben. He's, he's nice. Been... He's nice. And then I'll go with. So they put edge. I wish they did edge rushers all as one category because this is. Um, you know what? I'm actually gonna go. I'm going to go with Michael Brockers for the Rams. Three sacks. Actually, I'm going to go with... I'm going to go with Montez Sweat. Five sacks, two forced fumbles for the Washington football team. So, Ben, who do you have? I feel like we're going to have some different people. It's about to be, it's about to be very different. Um, all right, so I... Don't really know if you – are you looking at, like, just the who they have up for, like, the Pro Bowl voting? Like, that screen, is that what you're looking at? Yeah. Uh, okay. I went to the actual, like, stats that the NFL has, and I'm looking at, like, the sack leaders because uh, – Oh, well, that's... I think those are scattered throughout the def- defensive ends and defensive tackles. They, yeah, they are, but uh, it's – you can see what position they're listed at. So, um so I'll do AFC first since you did AFC first as well. Uh, Miles Garrett and Emmanuel Ogba have on my team. Uh, Garrett obviously leads league in sacks. He's playing really, really well. Uh, he's slowly coming along as one of the one of the defensive linemen in football, um, like getting up there with like top five pass rusher levels. Um, Emmanuel Ogba is a former Cleveland Brown washout who is having a great year with Miami. Perfect year to have a breakout. To be fair, yeah. he was pretty nice on the Browns. So it wasn't like he was a bust. He was pretty good. I like that yeah. signing. That and the Shaq Lawson signing, I really like for Miami. And those have been paying off. I didn't expect eight sacks, but hey, it's been pretty nice. Dude, I know. Yeah. And they've only played nine games, the Dolphins. So they still got seven more. Um, yeah, Agba has been quite fierce coming off the edge there. Uh, definitely don't want to dance with him for too long. Um, and then my last AFC defensive end is probably going to be Stephon Tewitt as well. Um, like you said, he's six sacks. Uh, he's a really good run stuffer. Um, you know, the sacks are something that he has been good at, but he's not like super elite at, but he's a really great run stuffer. And he adds a lot to that Pittsburgh team. Mm-hmm. Um, him and TJ Watt and uh, oh, who's the other defensive end? Uh, I got this right out of that Cam much. Hayward? Oh, yeah, that no, guy. No, he's a um, DT. Is he? I, I thought it was an end. Because he's TK not is a linebacker. On, Cameron Hayward's listed as a defensive tackle on this voting. Okay. Oh, really? That's weird. All right, well, yeah, regardless, they're all a really nice defense. And, um, uh, yeah, I think um, he definitely deserves to be on this list. Now, for the NFC... Who did you say you had for your NFC voting again? Uh, Brandon Graham, Montez Sweat, and Brian Burns. Interesting. All right. So, talk about my uh, my NFC defensive ends real quick. Um, okay. So, my first uh, defensive end is a guy you didn't mention who's on the Saints. Uh, Trey Hendrickson of the Saints, has seven and a half sacks, nine tackles for a loss. He's having a very nice season. 
Um, part of the reason that that Saints uh, team is where they're at right now. Um, he's played great. Brandon Graham I'm going to have on this list as well. He's been the lone bright spot on a really bad Eagles team this year. Um, I think really he's probably the only fun thing to watch on that team right now if you're an Eagles fan. Um, and then <clears throat> my other uh, NFC and this is going to be uh, um, what's this guy's name? I, I want to say this right. Uh, Romy from Detroit. I think that's how you say it. He's got six sacks as well. He tackles for the loss. He's been uh, really effective out there, and I think he's part of the reason that Detroit's been able to sneak in a few wins. Um, he's played pretty good this year. As a uh, Vikings fan, I get to see him play pretty often. Um, and, uh, yeah, I think he is definitely deserving of this t uh, spot. I like how our AFC picks were all the same. I almost went Max Crosby, but I just think the I guys we mentioned are better. I'm not seeing Trey Hendrickson on this list. Yeah, I he's listed as an end on the website, but, but I checked all the categories. He's not listed. That's so weird. I I don't know. The NFL's website is kind of a joke, anyways. Like, oh, there's okay. only like. There's only like 16 dudes you can pick from on some of the things. Like you can't pick Garden or Minshew. I don't know. This is weird. Okay, moving on to defensive tackles. With the first pick, I'm going with um, Aaron Donald. You know, one of the best. Needs no introduction to quote Ben. Um, I'm then going with Grady Jarrett. I think you could argue he's a tier below guys, like the top tier people. Two and a half sacks. He's really good in the middle, and I think he's a nice presence for the Falcons. And then for my third um, defensive tackle, I'm actually going to be going um, with a player who I think is a bit um, underrated in the league, and that is going to be David Onyemata for the Saints. Not only does he have 10 tackles, but he has three sacks. I didn't pick any Saints defensive ends, but I'm going with him as defensive tackle. Um, and then in terms of the AFC, we have Chris Jones. He's a beast. Seriously, I think you could argue he's the most underrated player. I think you'd say he's an elite presence. I'm going with Cam Hayward. We mentioned the Steelers defense is great, and Cam Hayward's one piece. What I like about the Steelers defense is they're all good. And then we have the Forrest Buckner for the Colts, the former 49er. Um, two and a half sacks, one forced fumble, but he's a good presence inside. And I think the Colts defense has been really nice. And I think he's a really big reason why they he's had um, a lot of success. So um, that is why my alternates, I'll do two from each. Akeem Hicks has been really good for the Chicago Bears. I would also get maybe go with um, the likes of someone like I think that actually um, that'll be one alternate, and then also Jim Blackman, rookie defensive tackle for the Colts, and Clay's Campbell would be my two AFC alternates. So a lot of good defensive tackles were in. We have a it's lot of Campbell. good people. Clay's Campbell's listed as a defensive tackle. Dude, they literally. <laughs> that's so wrong. Like it's not even funny. He's not a tackle. Um. Oh, jeez. Okay. I'm – so I'm going off ESPN's website because I don't know what the NFL is on. But I know ESPN has all the depth charts, so at least they know what they're doing. Uh, NFC defensive tackle for me is going to be uh, Aaron Donald for sure. I He needs no introduction. This dude is second in sacks as an interior pass rusher. Just let that sink in. Um my second um, uh, <clears throat> second NFC uh, defensive tackle is going to be Ndamukong Sue from the Bucks. He's been really nice in the middle for them this year. This year, he's been a huge uh, part of the reason that they've had such good defense. Um, he's a really good run. By the way, for he those watching, the... oh, he's listed what? as an edge rusher on the Pro Bowl voting. So yeah, I know. I'm doing my own thing now. This is stupid. 
I hate that. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so I'm going to go with... Uh, all right, okay, I don't need to keep talking about it. Um, and then my other defensive tackle from the NFC is going to be Akeem Hicks. He really helps lessen the pressure on Khalil Mack because his UFC on him too. Um, and he is an absolute beast by himself out there. You do not want to leave this guy alone. Um, yeah, he's a really big, really physical guy and he a lot of problems if you leave him unblocked. So that's my, uh, my NFC defensive tackles. As far as AFC defensive tackles go, I think Chris Jones definitely needs to be mentioned. Uh, he's probably mm. the best defensive tackle in the AFC, and I don't really think it's all that close either. He's a really good pass rusher, really good run stuffer. He's not to the Aaron Donald level of pass rushing, but as a run stuffer, this guy's insane. Uh, really, really great player. Um, let's see. Any more defensive tackles on this list? Are okay. you looking at the NFC? I'm looking at the AFC right now. So, uh, um, one of I, my I, I had Cam Hayward as well in DeForest Buckner. Yeah. So I know who my other two are going to be. So, um, DeForest Buckner is going to be one of my other ones. Uh, even though he hasn't had a ton of sacks this year, he has been a really good run stuffer, and um, he has really helped vault that Colts defense into that uh that number one spot they're the best defense in the league this year um hopefully they can do something with that well i'm going off fantasy points and they really are i don't know who else you could put up there steelers tampa bay at times yeah okay okay, you can argue the steelers um uh, tampa bay's been yeah maybe no they're not the best but they're good um yeah, so right outside of uh outside of uh um that that guy. Uh so my third uh AFC defensive tackle is gonna be Sheldon Richardson from Cleveland. Um he has played very, very good this year. He's already got thirty eight tackles, uh three and a half sacks for a loss. He's been a really solid uh interior rusher for them. So he's gonna win my third spot here. You have him over Cameron Hayward, okay. Here's why I disagree. Here's why I disagree. So, Richardson has one more sack, one more defense tackle. But yet, I think um, Cameron Hayward has much more of an impact to that Steelers defense. He brings more to the table. I mean, maybe. But Richardson is also playing with less around him on the defense. Like, he's got Miles Garrett on the other side. But the Steelers have T.J. Watt. And they have uh, a couple other really good pass rushers. They got Bud Debris up there. They got uh, – who's the guy we were just talking about? I, I had him in my Pro Bowl list. Uh, Stephon Tewitt, right. He's really good too. I'm, his job isn't all that hard. He really only has to go up against like one dude every play. Whereas, you know, Richardson is going to eat more double teams. Um, and he is a really good run stuffer. Yeah, um, okay, that's fair. Moving on to inside linebacker. I went with the two best duos, or the one best duo, which is the Buccaneers, Devin White. Fantastic. Love that pick. Glad it's paying off. Levante David has been great as well. And then I have Roquan Smith. Um, he leads tackles by at least a good amount, two sacks of forced fumble. And, yes, this is the first time I have Bobby Wagner missing the Pro Bowl in quite some time. Yes, Wagner's won a, a Hall of Famer, but I think he has really been just not really impacting the team that much. And in AFC, I got the rookie from Baltimore, Patrick Queen. He's been all over the field. Um, Darius Leonard, I think you could argue, is an elite linebacker for the Colts. He has good stats, but he's someone who's just is really rangy on the field. And, um, you know, I try to watch some Colts games, and Darius Leonard is one of the – staple players there. I think you could argue the staple player. And I went with uh, Jerome Baker here for the Dolphins. He's had some nice plays, I think, in that interior position um, for the Dolphins. You can maybe argue Tremaine Edmonds, maybe Zach Cunningham, actually. 
I just don't know. I just like that Dolphins defense a lot. I think Jerome Baker's part of the reason why. Um, so that's that's my voting. Um, yeah, so I'll go over my NFC linebackers uh, real quick. I like your list, by the way. I, I can see why you put a lot of those guys in there. I think mine's a little different, but um, Roquan Smith and uh, Devin White are both on my NFC list. Uh, Devin White is an inside linebacker, has five sacks, which is really impressive. Uh, you don't really see that from inside linebackers that much. He's also all over the field. Roquan Smith, um, he's been a very good piece on that Bears defense. Um, he's a really solid tackler, which is why he leads the league in tackles. Um, and then Eric Kendricks is going to be my other linebacker from the Vikings. This guy has been really the only good part about our defense for the entire season. Um, he is a really good coverage linebacker. He's had a few picks here and there, um, including one against uh, Stafford against the Lions a few weeks ago that kind of sealed the game. Um, Let's see. As far as... Uh... Sorry. Yawning. It's a little late. Um, as far as the AFC inside linebackers, uh, Zach Cunningham from the Texans is going to make my list. He... What? I knew you were gonna say that. I knew you were gonna say that, Ben. What? I, I, I like him, but I just think like, I just like Jerome Baker a bit better. I I get it. I well, get well, it. Who are your other two AFC linebackers? Darius Leonard and Patrick Queen. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Okay. Well, Jerome Baker is not the worst player that in there that you picked. Um. Okay. So I have. Zach Cunningham on this list because he's all over the place. This guy is an absolute animal. He's not the best coverage linebacker in the world, but he can get it done when it needs to be done. Um, and like I said, really good run stopper. Uh, this guy's really underrated, I think. Um, and he's one of the lone bright spots on that Texans team. Uh, their defense blows this year, and it's not his fault. Him and uh, – the other inside linebacker – well, he's not listed as an inside linebacker here, which is kind of frustrating. But uh, Bernardrick McKinney – He's nice. Uh, he is a very solid younger uh, linebacker. I mean, maybe he is an outside linebacker now, and I just didn't know that. But he's been very, very good. Other AFC uh, – uh, Tremaine Edmonds from the Bills. He is a really, really good uh, middle linebacker as well. He's great at covering. Um, He's not the best run stopper in the world. I think he's a little bit on the lighter side, but he's still a really solid linebacker, big playmaker, uh, hits really hard, um, and he's, he's great at covering tight ends as well. And then my other um, <clears throat> my other AFC linebacker here is probably going to be uh, – ooh. Patrick Queen, come on, Ben. He's been no. good. He's been rangy. Why, no. why not? Uh, I'm going to go with Josie Jewell from the Broncos. Are you kidding got... me? No. Are you kidding me? That Broncos defense is tremendous. It's horrific. It's tremendous. Yeah, I know that, horrific. but it's not his fault. I mean, he's good. I like jo Josie Jewell. I think he's underrated. He's like, I think, the good tier. But I just... Look, you have bias because you're a Ravens fan. So No, okay. Two more first yes. fumbles by Queen. Okay, He's look, it's Ranger. not about the stats, though. I've gotten to watch Broncos games because they're on my TV because they oh, suck no, and I they get to bad, play some bad man. stuff. Oh, no, yeah. he He has had some really good run stops, like super underrated. Um, like he'll just come flying through the line and just absolutely nail whoever gets the ball. Um. I don't know how he's done in coverage, but uh, I do know that he is decent um, just from what his, his college stuff has told me. Um, but I know he has played pretty good this year, despite the Broncos not being the best. Um, but he is a reason that they've managed to stay in a few games. I do think most of the reason the Broncos are struggling is not the defense, actually. I think it's the offense. Their offense is pretty Poor Drew Locke is a terrible decision maker. Uh, and, you know, I hate to say it, but he just looks kind of lost out there. Um, Unfortunately. I know they've dealt with a ton of injuries, but I think Jewel is very, very nice. And the Broncos have a young stud for the next 10 years, however long he's there. Okay. Um. 
Look, while Jerome Baker is nice. No, I'm saying Patrick Queen is better than Josie Jewell. No. I would say I would but say Josie sure. Jewell is better than Jerome Baker. I'll give you that. Josie Jewell's over Jerome Baker. Yeah, Jerome Baker is like a nice piece on his team, but I don't think he's like this Pro Bowl athlete. Darius Leonard was a guy I was thinking about putting on here, and I kind of wanted to, but he's like my alternate right now. Patrick better Queen Josie Jewell. is not making the Pro Bowl, dude. Get out of here. Josie Jewell. Okay. Patrick Queen plays on the like the third or fourth best defense in the league. Okay, moving on to outside linebackers. Why is Deion Jones listed as an outside linebacker? That's what I'm saying, bro. This website is ridiculous. So I'm going – okay, I disagree Isn't with – Isn't Jeremy Olaf. Chin a safety? He is. What? <laughs> What's going on? This is – Jalen Smith isn't an outside line. Miles Jack. Yeah, so – these guys are not outside linebackers. Bear with me. All there's a lot more people I wanted to put on here. So I'm going Khalil Mack. Needs no introduction. I'm also going to be going here with. Where's Jason, Khalil Mack? Jason Pierre-Paul, um, as well. I think he's been a really, um, nice piece. Um, you know, as one of just seven and a half sacks, forcing fumbles and interceptions. I think he can do it all. And then I'm going with Deion Jones. He's one of the best coverage guys. I don't know why he's listed as an outside linebacker. And then for AFC, I think Miles Jack is one of the most underrated players. Same now about a lot of these guys. He's truly elite at what he does. Um, I'm going to go with Harold Landry for Tennessee. He's gotten some nice plays. And I think that Tennessee defense has been nice at times. And then TJ Watt. Actually, no. Um, I'm actually going to go Bradley Chubb over Harold Landry. I think I, I think Chubb's having a better year and like that Broncos defense is terrible, but I think Bradley Chubb's a big reason why. So Chubb, Watt, Jack, and then Jason Pierre, Paul, Deion Jones, Khalil Mack they are my selections for outside linebackers. Yeah, that's why I'm looking at the ESPN thing, because the NFL website is totally goofed up with the position like thing. It's Honestly, kind of embarrassing. I don't know who made the Pro Bowl thing, but they should be fired. They did a terrible <laughs> job. Um, right, so I'll go with AFC first. So TJ Watt, he's no introduction. This guy is probably the best pass rusher in the league, and he's also one of the best run stoppers, just pure coming off the edge. He's probably the best at it. Um, he is, I think, better than his brother, which – I don't think he's really surprised anybody anymore at this point. Um, uh, I, I will say it'll be interesting to see who has a better career when it's all said and done. I think TJ Watt might win some Super Bowls, so I think it'll be the debate. Watt has the awards, or JJ has the awards, but TJ has the trophies. I think that'll be cool to see. Right. And, I mean, Stephon Gilmore shouldn't have even won it last year. It should have been TJ Watt. It was kind of ridiculous. I was upset about that. Um all right, let's see. So my, <laughs> I, I'm also going to have another Pittsburgh linebacker in here. Uh, Bud Dupree is another really good pass rusher. He's having a really good season. Um, and, you know, that Pittsburgh team does have a lot of really good, like, pass rushers. Like, their front five, like, just pass rushers is kind of nuts. It um, is. We've discussed all about a lot of them in this yeah. video. They're so talented. Yeah, um, and Bud Dupree is not the biggest linebacker in the world. He's really fast, though, and coming off the edge, he's kind of a nightmare, um, especially if he can put a move on you. He's really hard to catch. Uh, he has played great this year. He's been all over the def uh, the opponent's backfield, and he's got seven sacks, which is second on his team. So he's been very, very good. Uh, I've been surprised by him for sure. And then I am going to give my uh, my other defensive end spot to Bradley Chubb. Okay, that's he's good. He's been – yeah, he's been uh, pretty nice this year. Uh, I know we've been kind of critical of him, like, career-wise on the show because he was, like, what, a top five pick or something like that. And, you know, he's – I'd like to see him play a little bit better in the – like the pass rushing side side he's a good run block or uh, run stuffer but um as an outside guy you need to be a better edge rusher in today's game than run blocker i think 
Um, that's my opinion anyways. But he still has been very nice rushing the pass this year. So I'm going to give him my third AFC spot. Um, NFC spot, Zedarius Smith and Jason Pierre-Paul are both going to get it right off the bat. These guys are really, really dangerous off the edge. Uh, Zedarius Smith, I can't believe the Ravens let him go a few years ago. He's just been an absolute beast since he got to the Packers. Um, Pierre Paul leads the Bucks in sacks, and he's been great off the edge. Um, he hasn't really given up any big plays. Uh, not to mention he's also missing a few fingers on some hands, so that makes it even even more impressive in my opinion. Um, and then my hmm. – <laughs> Who do I want to pick? And that's like, I wasn't the trying to like ben slam said him. That he's missing some fingers. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't trying to like, you know, make fun of him. But like, yeah, but just the way you say, oh no. Yeah. Um, hmm. All right, I'll, I'll give I'll give Khalil Mack this one. Uh, I was thinking of picking his old teammate, Leonard Floyd, but I think I'm going to give this to nice. Khalil Mack. He's been good. Floyd, once he left the Bears, became so good. Like, he wasn't really all that great on the Bears, but uh, he's been very, very nice on the Rams. So this is tough, but I'm going to give it to Cleo Mack here. He obviously needs no introduction either. Yeah, Ben, those are good. I agree with you. Next up, we have safeties. Now, this is – want to go strong safety here. Oh, we're doing safeties first? Um, strong safeties. Uh, like, are we skipping corners, though? Oh, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll do that. <laughs> um, so corners I have – I'm getting ahead. I'm doing all my selections while you're talking. So I have Patrick Peterson um, returning to the Pro Bowl. I think he's played very nice this year. I think he's gotten some nice picks. Um, I'm going with him. Jarrell Alexander, I think you could argue, is a top-two cornerback. He has been very good on that Packers defense, a unit that has struggled. He's been great. And Jaron Ramsey just dominated DK Metcalf, um, and he's been elite all season. So that's why I have for the NFC, Marcus Peters, Marlon Humphrey, I have for the cornerbacks from Baltimore. If you don't want to put Marcus Peters on here, that's fine. But, I mean, he's got some electric plays. So has Marlon Humphrey. I got Tredarius White from the Buffalo Bills. I think Stephon Gilmore has decreased a little bit. Um, I think some of the Chargers defensive backs we liked before this season, um, I just think that they have struggled a bit. You can maybe put a Dolphins person on here, maybe Xavier Howard, but I don't know who you would replace them with. Um, Those are just kind of some of the names going through my head. Um, Ben, what do you have? I'm interested to see what you got. So corner is a lot harder for me because – I don't have time to really sit down and watch all these all these guys play, um, but all right. Let me start with the. I'll go with the NFC first. So, Jalen Ramsey is going to be my first pick from the Rams. He has proven time and time again that he is one of the top five corners in the league. He's absolutely shut people down this year. He's been an absolute beast. Um, yeah, he, he really has not given up like any plays this year. Um, he's just a solid player. Um, Patrick Peterson, I'm going to put, even though he did just get burned by Stefan Diggs at the end of the Bills game, um, he has played pretty well the rest of the year and he's coming back into form after the uh, suspension from last year. Um, I'm, yeah, I'm very excited to put him back on my list you know it's it's good to have him back on the list i love patrick peterson um my other nfc corner is going to be carlton davis from the buccaneers this guy quietly is having one of the best seasons from a cornerback um he's locked down a lot of a lot of dudes that he's played against um and he also has four interceptions uh very underrated player um as far as afc goes i think marlon humphrey definitely has to be up here this dude's an absolute turnover machine um and he is a very good coverage linebacker as well um let's see i'm gonna put joe hayden on this list as well he leads a Steelers secondary that's pretty good um he isn't what he once was with the browns but i think he still plays pretty well so i'm gonna throw him up there 
um, especially because he's been playing a lot better than most corners have this year. I think he's been really, really good. Um, and then I think hmm, – I am going to put – yeah, I'll, I'm going to put Marcus Peters as my third corner. He's, he's been great. This, also a turnover machine. Part of the reason that the uh, that uh, Ravens defense is so good. Um, so that's why I'm going to put him up there. And I know he's not the best man-to-man -man coverage guy, but okay. for the system he's in, it works great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay ben um i'm gonna wrap this up here because i feel like we've been going for a while i'm gonna be going with safeties here um so strong safeties for the nfc i have eddie jackson he, he you know what here's what i'm gonna do i'm gonna just list off a player and you're gonna say your thoughts and if you have them on your list say you have them okay so i have buddha baker yeah uh, Eddie Jackson. Yep. And then who do you have as your third um, strong safety for the NFC? Probably. Oh, I'll go um, Harrison Smith. Yeah, yeah. I'll put I'll Harrison him Smith and Jamal Adams. Jamal Adams has been a bit disappointing. Uh, yeah. The, we don't want to talk about the Seahawks defense. They suck. Um. Jamal Adams is a cool guy. He just kind of rubs me in the wrong way. Yeah. Um. I hope he gets better. And for AFC, I got Tyron Matthew. Yeah. I don't know. I'll go Chuck Clock for the Ravens. He stepped into that Earl Thomas role nice. Um. Some nice force fumbles and sacks. And then I'll go. Um. 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 <laughs> Who's up there for AFC? Here, here. Oh, Jordan Poyer. I, here, I miss here. that. I'll tell, you, I'll tell you who I'm picking for the AFC. So, yeah, I'm picking Jordan Poyer, uh, Tyron Matthew, and Ray Sean Jenkins from the Chargers. Those are my guys. Who's my third? Okay. Maybe and Jonathan I just, Abram. I just have Chuck Clark instead of Rashawn Jenkings. That's respectable. All right, Ben. Um... So then we go to NFC safeties um, for the free safety position. I got – this was definitely a bit more interesting for me. Um, I'm going to go with Keanu Neal. I think he's a very underrated player. Logan Ryan does not play free safety for the Giants, but I'll vote him. Also, sorry, guys, if this is a bit all over the place, but the, these positions are weird. And also, we don't have time to watch all the games, but hopefully we're putting together a good show here. And I'll go Kevin Byer, one of the best safeties in the league. Um, I, I really believe that. And then I'll go Antoine Winfield for the Buccaneers. Um, and then I'll go Minka Fitzpatrick, I think, and then two more NFC. I'll go... This is tough. Um, Logan Ryan, Kevin Byer, Antoine Winfield. Um, I'll go Trey. I'll go. I should go Trey Walker for the or uh, Trey Walker for the Lions. He's been pretty nice. Okay. Um. Yeah. So here I'll do my picks real quick. AFC is pretty simple. I'm gonna pick. Uh, Justin Simmons from the Broncos. He's one of the better safeties in the league. Uh, he's played pretty good this year. Kevin Byard needs no introduction. This guy led the league in interceptions a few years ago. He doesn't have any yet this year, but um, that's, I think, because people are afraid to throw to him. Uh, he's a very good coverage guy. Um, and then hmm, my other AFC safety is going to be Minka Fitzpatrick. Um, he doesn't really need an introduction either. Uh, NFC, I'm going to pick Josh Johnson from the Rams. He is really underrated. This guy is one of the best do-it-all safeties in the league. Um, and he's actually really good at covering 
especially for tight ends. Uh, I've got to watch a few Rams games this year, and he's been really dominant. Um, let's see. Antoine Winfield is going to get another one. I've already explained why I think he is deserving of uh, offensive or defensive rookie of the year. Um, and then my other NFC uh, – wow, there's like – I don't even think there's 32 safeties on this list. Are you looking at free safety? My other NFC – or free safety, yeah. I have Keanu, okay. Neal, Logan, Ryan. I don't even want to pick anybody. <laughs> These, the rest of the rest of the safeties on here are very good. Logan Ryan's been good for the Giants. Yeah, but he's corner. He's listed as, listed as a free safety. <laughs> But he's like literally a corner on the Giants website, and in the games. I I know, but I'm going with NFL. <laughs> well, then I guess I'd pick him, but that's kind of stupid. I'll pick Deshaun Gibson from the Bears because he's an actual safety. Okay. Oh, wasn't he on the Browns or Titans? Uh, Jaguars. Jaguars. Maybe he was. Okay. He was on the Browns to begin his career. Then he went to the Jags. I think he got released this off season and went to the Bears. Gotcha. And guys, I think that's going to do it here for this video. Uh, no kickers. Uh, I I mean, we could do – I don't really watch enough special teams. I, I'm not doing – Am the no I'll or go, Young Way Koo. I'll do two from each conference. Okay, ready? All I'll right. do Graham Gano and Young Way Koo, and then I'll do Rodrigo, Blankenship, and Justin Tucker. Oh, Blankenship is the goat. Uh can we, like, have some respect for the classes he uses in his games? Respect. Yeah. And then my punters are uh, Brandon Mann for the Jets and Pat O'Donnell for the Bears. And then for the other positions, I um, I went Coral Patterson and Andre Roberts as my returners. Um, but that's about it. Yeah, I don't even <laughs> – I'm not, I'm not even doing returners. I'm just going to go with uh, – uh, let's see – I'll go with I'll go with Pat O'Donnell and Brandon Mann just because they've had to punt the most. That sucks. Um, actually, oh, Brandon Mann's average is terrible. I'm not picking him. 38 yards per punt. What what is this little league? Uh, I'll go with Sam Cox from the Ravens. He's really good. Uh, he is good. Been finally showing some Ravens respect after choosing Josie Jewel over Patrick Queen. Oh, get, get out of here, bro. Patrick Queen's not even that good. He's like he's above he average. What? Not Pro Bowl worthy. He's better than uh, Josie Jewel. Uh, trash opinion. I'm just kidding. Um, all right, kickers, Graham Gano and Young Way Koo. These guys are absolute monsters out there. They've made – I don't think they've even missed this year. I think Gano's missed like one kick. And then Jason Sanders because the Dolphins are good. Uh, you know what? I'll throw a third NFC kicker in there. Can we get some respect for Jason Sly's beard from the Panthers? Joey. Uh, Joey. Yeah. <laughs> I thought it was Jason. Um. Who's the Bills kicker? What's this guy's Tyler name? Tyler Bass. Tyler Bass. This guy has made some really good kicks this year. And Blankenship, I'll put him up there because respect for the glasses. I don't really know who the – like, I, I haven't gone through all these guys' things. We, we all know who doesn't deserve to be on here, though, and that is Steven Goskowski. No. You know who also doesn't deserve to be in the Pro Bowl? Chelsea <laughs> Chul. And neither does Mr. Queen. Do Patrick, look up <laughs> Patrick Queen. <laughs> All right, let's do long snappers now. Just kidding. <laughs> oh no! I can't even Patrick. believe this is a Pro Bowl spot. Ben, you need to look up Patrick Jay Queen. Bowman Moyer. Oh my good. I mean, you need to look up some Patrick Queen tape. You need to look up some Josie Jewel tape. I like Josie Jewel a lot. Ooh, called out. <laughs> I do like Josie Jewel. I know. I know. I like anyway. Patrick Queen too. I just like Jewel more. Okay. Anyways, guys, I'll do it for this episode. Thank you all for watching. Um, before we leave, I do want to say congrats to Kirk Cousins on getting his first Monday night win. I'm absolutely disgusted how instead of talking about Kirk's win, um, people are talking about anything but that. So the media is going to hate on him. Unfortunate, he won a playoff game. I feel like he could win the Super Bowl by like 50 points, and they wouldn't even talk about him. And I'm not exaggerating, the guy yeah, had so many ridiculous. nice plays. Um, he did get his win though. Um, prayers up for Nick Foles, that is truly heartbreaking. Um, you know, I'm an Eagles fan, and it's tough. And you know, 
regardless if Nick Foles is a good quarterback or not. He's just one of the true saints of the games. So I hope he gets better. We'll see how Mitchell Trubisky does. But, Ben, do you think Matt Nagy's done for? Well, uh, I don't know about Matt Nagy, but I do think Ryan Pace is done. And I can see that. Well, you know, it's, it's actually hard because Ryan Pace has still had some really good picks and personnel decisions. It's just the quarterback thing. Like, they needed to give up on it sooner. But and honestly, then... it wouldn't surprise me if either – if both of them were still here after the season. I don't think – a trading for Nick Foles was stupid. And I've said – I told you that happened. I was, like, upset that that was the quarterback that they decided to bring in. Um, Trubisky, they should have given up on a long, long time ago. Um they would have been better off keeping Jay Cutler for three more years rather than having this guy. At least Cutler can hit his target. He just wasn't a great decision maker. Um, I will say this. I still stand by the opinion that before we signed Nick Foles' tape, that bringing him in was a good idea. Because the year before that, he was injured with the Jaguars. And then the year before that, he brought the Eagles to the postseason and – yeah, Matt but Nagy. he wasn't really very good with the Jaguars. He played one game, was but good, was and then he got injured. benched because he was playing so bad when he came back from yeah, the injury. That's very and true. I've told you this before. That Eagles thing was just a total streak of luck with him, like with Case Keenum and the Vikings. You're not going to get that out of him. Again, it just probably won't happen. And all you have to do is just look at his past tape to know, well, Nick Foles has – never started 16 games and been good. And he's really, I don't even think he's ever started 16 games in a season. So, uh, yeah, it's, and that's what I told you when they brought him in. I'm like, this might play out and he could be Super Bowl Nick, but I think that time has passed. So I really want to get Cam Newton. They didn't do that. And Cam hasn't even really looked all that great, but I'm not sure that's entirely his fault. I think um, Teddy Bridgewater would have been the best option. Teddy Bridgewater and Tom Brady was also on the market. No, I don't think Tom was really ever considering Chicago, but that could have been nice. Uh, the Bears have just – I mean, just think about all the quarterbacks they've whiffed on since they've drafted Jabisky. Like the guys that have been free agents or have left. Oh, man. You just... do not agree Nick Foles has had some nice moments with Chicago. He hasn't been, like, terrible, but he's been average. He's – no, he's been pretty bad. That I mean, Falcons they beat the Bucks. Nice. They beat the Bucks, but, like – That comeback was nice against Atlanta. You always got to admit that. Yeah, okay, that was his one and good to be fair, this year. he was kind of a one-man show there because David Montgomery, as we've discussed, is not that good. But I think you would have had a better running back. I don't agree with that because Jimmy Graham is playing well despite the quarterback situation being horrendous. They have Allen Robinson, who is arguably a top 10 wide receiver in talent. Anthony Miller is a really nice secondary option. And Darnell Mooney, uh, I think that's his name, uh, he has played exceptional when he's gotten the ball. He hasn't got it thrown to him a whole lot. Yeah, but he is really David good. Montgomery and is really the only bad part about that offense. The quarterbacks just haven't been able to take advantage of what's there. Uh, the line hasn't have... been all that great, but – who don't have a running game that still play well. Best example of that is Matthew Stafford. It, well, it's different this year for Stafford. He's got a, more of a running game. But, I mean, in the past, he hasn't had one at all. And he's still been able to put up good numbers, play well. And you could say the same about other players. Like Tom Brady has not had, really had great running backs throughout his career. Um, still manages to be one of the best. And, you know, I don't think it's totally fair to be like, oh, well, they don't have a good running game, so of course they're not going to be good. They, those quarterbacks are set up for success to do what they do. Despite not having a running game, they have some of the best receiving talent around them. Yeah, I think – well, I'm not saying they're bad because they don't have a running game. I'm just saying I think they would be a lot better if they had one. For no sure. But how much you make an offense one-dimensional, they're going to be one-dimensional. No matter right. how much that dimensional talent is. Right. And guys like Brady and Stafford are some of the best in the league. Yeah. Even That's what makes them special. Yeah, even still. 
I don't think Foles. If he was still in Philadelphia, he would look way, way worse than uh, Carson Wentz would. He's just not really a great starting quarterback. He's a nice backup. That's what he is. He can come in, try and make some good plays, and he hasn't. Well, that's the thing. He hasn't done that this year with Chicago. It's just it's really frustrating because he's so inconsistent. Like he, yeah, Atlanta, he's been nice. Tampa Bay, Tampa Bay was really more of the Buccaneers not being able to do anything. He on was offense. not good in that game. No, yeah, he wasn't really. That was such a sloppy game. That's the thing. This whole like, and the announcers were like. They agreed with me on this. Their whole season has been the Bears missing their players by just a few inches, whether it's the Anthony Miller pass down the field before Foles got hurt or the Tyler Bray throw that was just a few feet overhead of whoever he was aiming for in the at the end of the game there to try and come back. Mitch Trubisky is – we don't need to speak about his accuracy. We know how bad that is. It's just Foles is not consistent. And what's sad is you could argue – he has better receiving talent right now than he did when he was going to the Super Bowl. Yeah, I and agree. I think it's about on par. Yeah, and he hasn't been able to do anything with it. It's just that he's inconsistent. And I like him. I like Nick Foles. He's a great dude uh, off the field. Just as a player, he's really hit or miss, and most of the time it's miss. Yeah, I would agree he's hit and miss. I'm not saying he's good, but I don't think he's like a terrible quarterback. I think he would do better in Philly than Wentz because at least he wouldn't make – he would know when to throw the ball away, being honest. Maybe. He – I don't know why everyone's so afraid. Maybe because he won the Super Bowl. But to me, he's really just a duct tape quarterback. You put him in a spot for a year or two and move on from him if you really need a quarterback. And yeah, like Teddy you, Bridgewater you, and um, potentially, yeah. If Bridgewater can cut back on his mistakes, I think he'll be able to be the starter in Carolina long term. But mm, um, I don't know. I, maybe like three years. Yeah, um, he's, he's also, a little bit on the older side now. Anyways, I could see who like I I would put Nick Foles and like Teddy B in the same range. Just who's another Case Keenum? I, I think they're a bit. They're around there. I'm trying to think of examples. Brett Hundley. Oh, so Bridgewater plays a lot like Tyrod Taylor. He's very conservative. Yeah. He doesn't throw the yeah, ball deep a, a lot. Um, he's a really good system quarterback. So if you can, if you have a really good team and you want a cheap quarterback, which is what I think more teams should be doing, go get Teddy Bridgewater. Or Nick Foles. He's not going to screw everything up for you. Uh, no, no, yeah. no, no, yeah. no, no, no. That's a bad idea. He, we just talked about how he has good talent around him, and he oh, can't yeah. do anything with it. I'm saying if Which, you have a good team with a, like a cheap quarterback, that's what I meant. Like I think he is a system quarterback. I was agreeing with you about that. Okay. Um, Teddy Bridgewater is better than Nick Foles. Yeah. Uh, honestly, Fitzmagic is probably like if there was a Hall of Fame for – Backups, he is number one goat. Uh, backup right. yeah, quarterback. I would say Fitzpatrick's better than Nick Foles. For sure, yeah. Nick Foles I, is actually – Nick Foles, the more I think about it, Nick Foles is a lot like Joe Flacco. They've had some – they both won a Super Bowl. I think Foles was better in his Super Bowl run than Flacco was, but now they're to the point where they stirred some years after for that team – and they had some nice plays because even after Nick Foles won the Super Bowl, he still had some really great plays um, and good moments with the Eagles. And then they both went on to be a backup at, like, below average quarterback cost. So I think Flacco and Foles are having a very similar trajectory with their careers of being a hometown hero, but that's about it. I don't see well, them. We'll see if uh, Foles can bounce back his career with a absolute terrible team next year. Because Flacco's looked pretty good on. I'm gonna lie, he's he's played pretty good football, especially his past weekend against the Patriots. He had one good game. Don't well, get he's only play. started in two games, right? Three. He was with the Cardinals, the Dolphins, and the Patriots. One of them, he scored zero points. But the Jets are bad. I don't know. That's true. I mean, Foles had one good game. Flacco's had one good game. Yeah. 
Flacco's only had one game where all his receivers were healthy, though. That's I don't think true. Foles Foles has only. I don't think any of his players have missed any time for injury except for Montgomery, and that's just one game. Yeah. And by the way, the the backups on the Bears like running backs room is horrible. Like they're way worse than David Montgomery. They couldn't do anything against the Vikings. Oh yeah, I'm interested to see where Jordan Howard goes. Uh, he, he should go back. I, I I want him to wait until after the Vikings game. He should go back to the Bears. They desperately need him. They've had nothing on the ground since he left, and he was good running back there. Mm-hmm. And then the Eagles totally ruined him. They're like, "Here, go catch passes," and he's like, "What? I'm a power back." Yeah. He was second behind Zeke in um yards. The, the first Eagles four just seasons. are. I know. Yeah, dude. The Eagles are just prone to like trading for running backs that are really good, and then just completely dismantling their career. Like they did that with DeMarco Murray. Remember when oh, they traded for him? No, he, we don't talk about that, Ben. Absolutely terrible. Oh. That's one example. Yeah, well, Jordan Howard's another one. They did redeem themselves with the Laguerre Brunt move. That was a good move. It was like a one-year deal. Yeah. He was really good with them, won the Super Bowl. And Jay I Jai, think though, he wasn't very good with the Eagles. He had, a good season. he had a good season in the Super Bowl year. Then That's he got true. injured. What happened to him? He got injured. He got a really bad injury. Dang, is he really not on a team anymore? That's wild. Probably that gets better with injury. Um, I still like the Patriots idea for Jordan Howard. I could see that for Bill Belichick. Kind of this like running scheme with Cam, like a power scheme. I could see that. Maybe the Bills, but they like Devin Singletary. He's been getting a lot of touches. Maybe Jacksonville. Who's at number two with James Robinson? True. And the thing with the Bills is they barely run the ball as it is. I don't think they've they been running it a lot more. They well, had some a lot of runs against the Patriots. I have him on my fantasy team, Devin Singletary. I can tell you right now they are not running the ball with him. Dude had fifteen yards on nine carries last week. Yes. How about on Jacksonville? Maybe I think if I if you to sign with Chicago, I think it would make the most sense for him to to probably sign with. Oh, the Cardinals. I was gonna say that, but no, they have Chase Edmonds. So never mind. Yeah, but Chase is a he's five nine. He's not a power back. But do they need He's a, a power back? back? I don't know. They, not really. I mean, they've they don't really run the ball when they get into the red zone. Like, but that's also they because they more. don't have a power back. Or they run with Kyler. So. Uh, yeah, that's true. Uh, um. Yeah. So Jordan Howard will be interesting. Oh man, Ben, could you see Carson? What do you think is Carson Wentz's career trajectory? Because as an Eagles fan. I've talked about this with my dad and a lot of Eagles fans. I think it's half the coaching staff, half of him, because he had that MVP season. What I could see happening is I think that he could get traded to the Colts. Frank Reich trades for Carson Wentz. Phil Rivers retires. Uh, I've heard that. On, I heard that I like somewhere, that. and I love that. I think Wentz has a lot of talent. I do. He's mobile. He has athletic. He's had some fantastic plays in his career. Last year was a good season for him, even with that. I just think that the play calling in Philadelphia is seriously some of the most terrible play calling I've ever seen. They put Jalen Hurts in, and he hardly throws it. And he's like a talented passer, but they never throw it with him. So was he's in the game, he literally hands it off and keeps it, and he goes nowhere. So you're wasting your second-round pick. The Eagles took J.J. Sega white side over D.K. Metcalf. I'll never get over that. Um... The John Rager pick over Justin Jefferson. Rager hasn't been a complete bust, but still, that looks terrible. So, I'm so glad that they took him instead of Justin Jefferson. I'm so ecstatic that he Rager, is on the Vikings. Rager would have been good on the Vikings. A good deep threat. Uh, uh, just, yeah, been but nice. He's not Justin Jefferson. He's so. not. But I'm saying it still would have been an okay move. Sure. Yeah, but you know, I'm not complaining that you know. 
if mm-hmm. things aren't switched. Um, yeah, the here's my thing with Wentz is also he says the same thing after every game. I'm, I'm ranting here. What does he say? I don't get to watch any of the post game interviews. He so says I, I have to be better every week. And listen, I love Carson Wentz. Christian, you know, he has a foundation. He's an awesome guy. But putting that aside. He says the same thing. It just feels like he doesn't get better. So I don't know what it is. He makes really dumb mistakes. So I just throw the ball. Here's what I here's like. what I think it is. So I think he's trying to take the blame for his teammates because I don't think he believes in any other person. I think he feels like he's the only guy good, and he doesn't trust any of his other players. And you know what? I don't totally blame him because. Really, outside of their running backs, they they don't have any talent there. I mean, Travis Fulgham is nice, but I've seen him drop some pretty easy passes. Um, outside of him, they really they have, they have nothing like consistent for him to throw to. Greg Alshon Ward Jeffrey, is a nice number three. Uh, I mean, you're throwing to Greg Ward. Like, think about that. That's who your number three is. Sure, he's he's okay, but like, actually, number four. Like, if they had. Here's why I don't – if they if Marquise Goodwin didn't opt out, which I get why he did, but if they had him, healthy Rager, Fulgham, um, Miles Sanders. Jeffrey's coming back this week. Greg Ward, Zach Ertz, like that wouldn't be – that would actually be pretty nice, but they don't have that. They've been – what did you say about who? Alshon Jeffrey's coming back this week, so no, that might help. last week, and he had oh, he did? zero targets for zero catches and zero yards. <sighs> Would they play I, again? The Giants? Oh, well, they're actually a nice defense. So James Bradbury. I oh, totally I should have voted there. James. No. I yeah. The Eagles. I hope they. I hope they trade Wentz. He needs to get out of there. They're totally. They're really mismanaging their Super Bowl team. They are keeping the players they should not have and getting rid of the ones they should have kept. Yeah, that's what like a lot of people. Nelson Aguilar. It seems like a saint compared to what they're throwing to right now. I Nelson mean, Aguilar has been good for Las Vegas, and I think it's the coach. He's been thing. so nice with the Raiders. Because like Aguilar, yeah, and, leaves, here's what oh here's what I say. Sorry to interrupt, but my thing is a lot of these players that look terrible for the Eagles. Would they be terrible? Like JJ Arcega, why side looks bad. If he went to another team, would he be bad? I don't know because we thought that about Nelson Aguilar, and now he goes to a team and he's like a top. 20, 25, I don't know, that's all I get about He's good. He's pretty yeah, nice. So. I'll put him up there. I'll put him up there. I like think it's the 25. coaching staff that's really bad. I think it's the coaching staff that's just – they're so and bland. They're so uninspired. They yeah. don't use a – like, J.J. has Sega Whiteside. Say what you say about him. I'm talking to myself, but, like, he's <laughs> physical. He's always in the slot. Like, why? Use him in different ways. Like, Yeah, and I think that's coaching. I mean, he is a really big dude, and I – don't know why he's not out there more. Maybe he's not a great route runner. Not, I mean, he's not the best he's hands. He's played terrible, but I don't think that's all his fault. I think it's coaching. Right. Yeah. It's certainly. I'm sure, like the Patriots would love to have a big body dude on their team. Now, I don't think. I don't think they would have even thought about trading for this dude at the trade deadline. But you're. I think you're right. They keep whiffing on not only free agents. But trades and the draft, they've completely fumbled every piece that they've had since that Super Bowl run. Uh, They kept their offensive line together for way too long. These guys are all like 35, and it's starting to show. They're not playing very well this year. Um, And it's a lot of the same dudes from that Super Bowl run. Uh, Ertz is hurt, but he wasn't really playing all that well before he got hurt anyways. and honestly, Zach Ertz kind of reminds me of Jason Witten, where, like, he puts up good numbers, but I don't feel like he's really all that dominant, if you get what I'm saying. Like, he's good. I understand. But he can be dominant, but I don't think he's dominant on a week-to-week basis. Right. Like, he can make – yeah, he can – okay, so here's – don't give me – don't take this the wrong way, but – I think he can make some good catches, and he can get open a lot. But I don't think he's like that much of a playmaker, you know? Yeah, I agree. Yeah, so he's hurt. Obviously, it doesn't help. The whole Eagles team has been suffering. The defense is horrendous, which also doesn't help. Wentz has to score, like, 35 points if they want to win. Uh, he's got nothing consistent to throw to. 
Um, Deshaun Jackson has been all but nothing on this Eagles team. He has like two catches in two years with these guys. Um, the the lines on both sides are too old. Uh, well, Brandon Graham and Fletcher Cox are still okay, I guess. But they're just – the GM has done a horrible job putting together this team. Trading for Darius Slay looks like – it looks like a lose-lose for the Lions and for the Eagles because Jeff Okuda sucks, and so does uh, Darius Slay. He hasn't played very good. Okay, I have something to say. Sorry for the interruption. Go but ahead. I will say this. Jeff Okuda, he's had some nice plays, and it takes a while to learn the corner position. Like, Jareel Alexander wasn't that great for Green Bay. Now he's good. Stephon Gilmore took a while, so I'm not ready to put the – yeah, the label on but, him yet, but like I, I feel... mean, so like, but like other rookie corners this year have been better, and the Vikings rookie corners have played better on tape than Jeff. Okuda. I will say this: I was this not... dude gets burned like every other play. It's bad. I will say this: I did not have the Lions taking Jeff Okuda in my mock draft, so boom. <laughs> also, yeah. um, before we end this podcast, hope you guys like these longer episodes. Um. I do want to mention real quick, um, I'm a Ravens fan, you know, but I'm tired. I was texting you about this, but I feel like people with Lamar after a bad game, you have one spectrum, like, he's terrible, he sucks. Um, Oh, my gosh, you know, blah, blah, blah. And you have the other spectrum, it's like, oh, don't blame Lamar. He was the best part of the team. I'm somewhere in between. I think that Lamar is not a consistent passer, and I think he could be better at it. However, he does make some nice plays on the run. Like this past game with the Patriots, he had some nice touchdowns. I'm not going to ignore that, but he had some misses. I just think he needs some wide receiver help. I think that the Ravens and Eagles are in very similar situations where the quarterbacks had an MVP or MVP-like season. They need to help retain it. I don't think Lamar's in trouble. I was telling my dad this, but I think he's on the verge of getting in trouble. I think he needs to go out there and get number one wide receiver. And I think both the Eagles and Ravens are at this point where they're like, the people we have are good. No, you have to look at that and say, we need people to be better. And the people we don't have, it, it's just not sufficient enough. And I think that, like, I like the Hollywood Brown selection, and I know you've been very against that pick. I'm, at, I'm with the belief that if you had a number one wide receiver – he would be producing a lot more, but they don't. So it's just frustrating because it's like – Yeah. It's – Hollywood Brown was all right last year. And the other thing where he said he was playing through a broken foot, I don't really believe him, but whatever. It's not a big deal. He just kind of reminds me of like a – I mean, he's just your standard really fast player. He doesn't strike me as like this superstar – which the Ravens are just kind of missing that number one consistent, really good wide receiver. Hollywood's capable of making some plays as like a slot receiver on most teams. But, and in an offense that's run heavy, he actually should be able to make more plays than he's making because of the play that'd be involved, which I also don't think is there as much. Um, I yeah, I will admit, though, having just Hollywood Brown to throw to and Willie Sneed and Mark Andrews. whoever the other guy is, Chris Moore. Yeah, well, yeah, Mark Andrews is a good tight end, obviously. He is actually uh, probably a top five tight end, honestly. He's, he's pretty good. Um, but as far as receivers go outside weapons, you know, it's not, there's not a whole lot there. Uh, yeah, I agree. Nice. Um, he's not really super good at any one thing. Um, and then I don't know who their third wide receiver is or if he's even on the field ever, really. I think it's Chris Moore. Devin DuVernay needs more snaps. I just don't get it. I want to wrap this up here because it's about to be two hours. But yeah, um, the Ravens, I think, need to use their players more. And I hope they do. Um, this should be uploaded on Saturday. Um, and they play the Titans tomorrow which I think could be a potential loss for them. I think Derrick Henry's going to have a fun day. He's going to re- recreate some nice stiff arm moments. And I think that the Ravens, 
the more I think about it, I could see them not making the playoffs. I think that the NFL's caught on to Lamar Jackson. Um, they have an easier schedule, but you never know if they lose to Tennessee and Pittsburgh. And if other teams rise up in the AFC, it wouldn't surprise me. Or I think they could be a very much one-and-done team. Yeah, and then so... you have to build around Lamar. For one year, if it doesn't work, move on. But that's my thoughts with the Ravens. Right. So after going back and fixing, I, I left my schedule up from our last episode, like with the the predictions and everything. Went and changed all the games I was wrong about. Um, I no longer have the Ravens or the Titans in the playoffs as the Whoa. Colts and the Browns now take their spot. If you remember correctly, I had Cleveland at 11-5. and five. Baltimore was also 11 and 5. Since they lost to the Patriots, they're now at 10 and 6 looking from the outside. And uh, Tennessee, I had beating the Colts and the Colts sitting outside the playoffs at 10 and 6. But the Colts beat Tennessee, and I think they'll probably do it again. So we will see. But playoffs have been changed drastically this past weekend. And I think, you know, Cleveland and Baltimore are going to be fighting for that seventh seed, mm-hmm. and Tennessee and Indianapolis are going to be fighting for their division quite frequent, uh, pretty frequently here over the next few weeks. Yeah. You could say the same about Miami, too. They're going to be fighting for that playoff spot. This is going to be a really interesting AFC. I'm, I'm really excited to see how this playoff thing turns out for them. I could see New England making it in. I don't know, though. Their offense is not that great. I think Houston will beat them this week. Same, I think. Um. And I think the Colts could beat the Packers. I haven't done my predictions yet. They should be up at the time of recording this, but I think that Phil Rivers and the Colts defense steps up against Aaron Rodgers. Anyways, to quote Supreme Leader Snunk, we shall see. And that's what we will do, everyone. Thank you all for watching another episode of the Man to Man College Podcast. This has been Tam and Doran Love. Ben, once again, thanks for joining me. Always a pleasure, man. Looking forward to the next one. Yep. And until then. We'll see y'all next time. Have a good one.